I was there to help him through this terrible moment in his life. But you caused that terrible moment. Yep. Everything worked out for everybody in the end. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 worst things Stan Smith has done on American Dad. Is that why you were acting so weird? Weird? How? Stabbing me comes to mind! For this list, we're looking at some of the worst and most detestable actions committed by Stan Smith. What's the worst thing you think Stan Smith has done? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Faked Family Vacation when the Smith family goes on vacation, it looks like a pretty good time, except it turns out it's all fake. Francine, Haley, and Steve discover themselves in artificial memory chambers that Stan places them in every year to make it seem like the family is having a great vacation. Well, every year Stan checks out these artificial memory chambers from the CIA, plops you suckers in, and then programs a great vacay. This year's Maui, sweet! Stan's reason for doing this? His idea of a vacation is being away from his family. That's pretty bad, but it definitely gets worse because Stan drugs his family to place them in the chambers. Not only does he deceive his family, but it's heavily implied that Haley suffers some adverse health effects from being exposed to the goo in the chambers. Honey, look! I'm returning the goo chambers to the CIA! Ma'am! Don't get any of that goo on you, it'll rot out your womb! Number 19. Convincing Francine she killed her friend. Stan can't stand being called out by Francine with I told you so. So, when she believes setting up a date between her friend Melinda and Stan's boss Bullock won't work, he does everything to prove her wrong. I cannot hear those words again, and I'll do whatever it takes to keep her from saying them as God is my witness. A complication arises when Bullock accidentally kills Melinda thinking she's a terrorist. Since Francine can't know the date ended poorly, to say the least, Stan makes it look like Francine killed Melinda. Francine is so distraught over what she thinks she's done that she leaves for India to help the less fortunate. Stan eventually comes clean, and she rightfully chews him out for the torment and anguish he caused her. You made me think I was a murderer? Do you have any idea what a nightmare you put me through? Number 18. Giving Steve a gun for Christmas Stan wants to get Steve a gun. When he tells Francine, she says it's dangerous and makes him promise that he won't buy one for their son. Guns are too dangerous for Steve. Promise you won't get him one for Christmas. I promise I won't get Steve a gun for Christmas. Of course, Stan ignores his promise and buys Steve one anyway. He doesn't teach Steve how to responsibly use it. And in a mall parking lot, he makes Steve fire it at a snowman, resulting in someone dying. Does Stan show any concern about what happened or how this will impact Steve? He's more worried about Francine finding out he gave Steve a gun. And make sure your mother doesn't find out. If she knew I gave you a gun, she'd kill me. Or maybe she'd get you to do it, huh, killer? <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding, but you, you have killed someone. Number 17. Capturing Mom's Boyfriends Stan might have an unhealthy relationship with his mother. It's not super common to get in the bath with your mom and wash her, but that's what Stan does. What do you do when your mom's unhappy? Jerry left her feeling crappy. Sing her a shanty nice and snappy. Wash her in the bathtub. Francine and Roger decide to set Betty up with Hercules, but all the previous men she's dated haven't lasted past the third date. Roger decides to contact previous dates to find out what happened, and discovers all of them are missing. You know Betty's boyfriends? The ones who keep leaving her? Well, they're not leaving her, they're disappearing! Missing, missing, missing. At first they think she's a black widow, but the truth is Stan has been kidnapping the men and placing them on a remote island for the past 35 years. It is unbelievably cruel. Number 16. Brainwashing Haley to be a sleeper agent Haley's been having a recurring dream, and she believes it's a sign that she's expected to conform to societal expectations of marrying and having kids. That dream is a warning. Society's trying to brainwash me to conform, to, to color inside the lines, to get married and have babies while I'm not <coughs> drinking the Kool-Aid anymore. Have you tried it with Splenda? Wait, wait, Haley. This'll take you off the path to happiness. Not wanting that life, she decides to move to France to live a carefree life. It's revealed that when Haley was a kid, she was in a sleeper agent program, and her programming can be activated with the trigger phrase. In a last-ditch effort to stop her, Stan uses the phrase to control her. Goodbye, Dad. Haley! Uh, I'm getting fed up with this orgasm! Agent Small Wonder activated. What are my orders? It's a complete intrusion of her autonomy and free will by Stan because he thinks she should live a traditional life. Number 15. Almost taking Steve's virginity with an avatar After nearly missing Steve's birthday, Stan comes to realize he's missed many events in his son's life. 
As a way to connect with Steve, he decides to do so with an avatar named Phyllis, which he controls remotely. Wow, I, I, I don't believe it. This is too good to be real. Of course this is real. And, and this, this is, is really, really happening. happening because, because this, this is, is real. real. Really, really, really real. real. It's certainly an inventive way to get closer with your son. However, Steve begins to lose interest in Phyllis and instead starts taking a liking to Chelsea and plans to ask her to homecoming. Desperate, Stan, as Phyllis, states if Steve goes to the dance with Phyllis, the two can be intimate. It's definitely an unexpected turn that even Bullock is shocked about when he hears about it. This is sick, man. Are you really going to go through with this? I've already missed so much of Steve's life. This way I get to keep hanging out with him. Plus, I get to be there for his biggest milestone ever, losing his virginity. To you, you idiot! Have you even thought this through? Stan would have gone through with the deed, but thankfully, Francine shows up and talks him out of it. Number 14, putting his family in poverty. Francine wants a new car, and when Stan goes to negotiate at the dealership with Felix, he ends up overpaying for something he didn't want. And I got it for a sweet ten grand. We sold it to him for seven. Yeah, but he let me keep the phallus for no extra charge. Because you already paid for it! Francine, there's a lot of math, man math, involved in a car purchase that... Damn it! It gets to the point where Stan feels so ashamed that he abandons his family because he doesn't feel worthy to be in their presence. This puts his family in dire financial straits. Francine and Haley become house cleaners to make money, and they can't afford to clean themselves or their clothes. It turns out Stan leaving his family was a ploy to get a discount on the car Francine originally wanted. My plan worked perfectly. Plan? What plan? Why, my pretending to be depressed and go crazy plan. Pretending? You put us through all this on purpose? Putting your family through hardships is obviously terrible, but Stan didn't even get that good a deal. Number 13, wiping his family's memory. Father's Day is supposed to be Stan's day, but his family forgot all about the holiday. They decide to celebrate Stan after the fact in order to make it up to him. What if we pretend tomorrow is Father's Day? I don't know. Come on, you name it, we'll give you your perfect day. Huh, I guess that could work. He gives Haley, Steve, and Francine instructions on what exactly to do for his special day. After being convinced by Roger that the family's effort was subpar, Stan wipes their memory so everyone can redo their tasks. Stan keeps wiping their memory until he gets the perfect Father's Day. We need to talk, bro. Not now, Klaus. I have to top off the Pert Plus and reset all the radio recordings so they have a chance to make tomorrow perfect. Dude, you've lost it. Tomorrow. I'm sure tomorrow will be the perfect Father's Day. It's another instance of him removing his family's agency for his own selfish desires. Perhaps worst of all is that he's kept them in this loop for six months, and that's on top of berating them when they find out what he's been doing. You brainwashed us? Oh, of course, make it about you. Well, since you won't remember this anyway, I'll get everything out of my system so I can wake up tomorrow without being so cheesed off. Number 12, ruining Brett's life. In search of a friend, Stan comes across Brett after praying to God. The pair becomes inseparable, doing many activities together. <laughs> it's a match made in heaven until Brett reveals that he doesn't believe in God. Stan tries to prove that God is real because he fears that Brett won't get into heaven. When that doesn't work, he destroys Brett's life believing that if his life is in shambles, he'll turn to God. Of course. People turn to God in times of crisis. If I want to save Brett's immortal soul, all I have to do is destroy his life. Stan blows up his house, ruins his restaurant, and has his family leave him. Certain Brett will convert, he instead attempts to take his own life. Stan gets his wish, as Brett now believes, but also makes a pact with Satan. And that's where I met the devil, who agreed to let me come back to life if I would work to spread the fame and glory of Satan. <laughs> and now, now, Brett, you know you've suffered some massive head trauma. No, Stan, it's true. Number 11, injuring Steve. Worried that Steve may one day kill him, Stan decides he needs to spend more time with his son. The two bond over bowling once it's discovered Steve is a natural at the sport. Damn, son, you're a natural. Here, I found us some nachos. Mmm. I love the way the filth from the finger holes mixes with the synthetic cheese. Eventually, Steve's skill gets him noticed by a coach who can advance his career as a bowler. When Steve is on the cusp of qualifying for the Pro Tour, a disguised Stan stabs Steve in the ankle, ending his career. My God! The Lumberjack has been stabbed! This is truly bowling's darkest, most exciting day! Steve figures out it was his father who was responsible and is upset. 
Stan explains that he felt he was going to lose Steve, which is why he did what he did. But you didn't have to stab me. I didn't? Well, what? Of course you didn't! There could never be a reason to... Never mind. Stan's fear is understandable, but you can't stab your problems away. Number 10. Blinding himself and admitting to only marrying Francine for her looks. There's no denying that Francine's a beautiful woman, and Stan is a very lucky man to have married her. She is just beautiful. That's the reason I married her. Well, that's not the only reason. Yes, it is. Before they renew their vows, however, Stan reveals to Francine that her looks are all that matter to him. Angered by this, Francine foregoes her daily beauty regime, showing how shallow Stan can be. I'm ready to renew our vows! <gasps> not one to be deterred, Stan does what he believes is righteous and blinds himself. He wants his marriage to work so bad, but openly admits Francine is so disgusting he had no choice but to blind himself. I had my retinas removed. I'm completely blind. <gasps> a toast to us. Jeez, talk about not being able to see beauty on the inside. This was a test to see if you loved me for who I am, and you failed! Number 9. Tormenting the formerly human Klaus Stan will do anything for his country, and after the USA Olympic skiing team was threatened by Klaus's talent, the CIA opted to swap the German athlete's brain with that of a fish. Stan then took the now aquatic German into his home. <laughs> now, a harmless goldfish may not seem too terrible at first, but Stan has done nothing but torture Klaus in his own home, ignoring him, silencing him, and even refusing to give Klaus his body back after the whole ordeal. Stan, please put me back in my body! Uh, sounds like a hassle. Not like it had mattered too much anyway, since thanks to Stan's incompetence, Klaus's body is useless now. Hey, I need that Klaus Heisler body that came in last week. Oh, sure thing, it's right here. Number 8. Evicting his entire neighborhood because they made fun of him. We all have the neighbors that gossip behind our backs, make jokes, and point out our flaws. But for Stan, he just doesn't understand how someone may or may not always like him. Oh my god! Oh my god! I'm not beloved! I'm hated! I'm surrounded by people who hate me! After spying on his neighbors, he finds nothing he does will make them love him. So he does what any regular CIA agent with extreme insecurities would do. Evict everyone in the neighborhood. Honey, good news! The neighbors no longer hate me! Because they're no longer our neighbors. In other words, there goes the neighborhood. Of course, his own family is no exception, and he's more than willing to do the same to them. We'd hate to see what he would do if they were mean right to his face. What are we going to do about Dad? He's completely lost it. Shh! If he hears us, he'll send us all to the Cornfield Motel! Number 7. Becoming Steve's Tormentor Steve is not exactly the athletic type, or courageous, or outgoing, or popular, no, the list goes on. So what's the best method to help build up your nerd son? Becoming their tormentor, of course. That's right, Steve's own father goes out of his way to antagonize Steve in the hopes of turning him into a man. Mmm, delish. Want a sip? Oh, yes, please. I would love some- ah! Bothering him in and out of school, Stan becomes even less of the father figure he was, turning into nothing more than a nightmare for Steve. Who's doing this to you, son? You better not say a Word or I'll kill you. It's only through the help of someone tougher that Stan is taken down a peg. And while we don't condone this action, we think Stan deserves this. You tell me when you feel I've gotten those oranges up the stairs, okay? Number 6. Abandoning Francine and Haley to a vengeful Roger Stan's relationship with his family has always been questionable to say the least. But his devotion truly comes into question during what looks to be their final moments. Stan, can you please just put a jumpsuit on like the rest of us? No can do. Earth Stan is boxers. Space Stan is panties. After a roast gone wrong sends their vengeful alien companion Roger out for blood, the Smiths escape to a space station, only to be chased down and hunted in sci-fi thriller style. Steve, behind you! When Francine and Haley plead for Stan to help, he turns tail and runs to the nearest escape pod. He displays zero empathy for what he believes to be their demise, concerned only with his own safety. Well, I did all I could. Number 5. Murdering the Clones of Teenage Girls Stan's done plenty of damage to his own children, but to kill Steve's raised clone was taking it a bit far. If the world discovered the CIA was cloning things, they'd shut us down for playing God. You know who else played God? George Burns. And he's dead! After Steve used DNA of a girl to create clones, 
he raised her from a child into a young woman, and while it was the intent to have intercourse with her, he began to see her in a fatherly light. Didn't think you had it in you, but seriously, sick trim, bro. Stan, however, sees the cloned girls as nothing more than reasons to get him fired by the CIA and elects to kill the two. Stan! Don't judge me, it was just a clone. While the clones are revealed to have only lasted a brief time, it's pretty sadistic to see Stan kill two young girls who the two boys became attached to. Ah! Just to be sure. Number 4. Running a Sweatshop Stan doesn't really understand the plight of illegal immigrants, or labor laws, or common decency. What happened to the land of the free? These people have a right to be here. People? They're parasites sucking on the rich blood of America. And we need that blood to shed for oil. When his dream of holiday-themed bears hitting the store shelves seems out of reach, out comes a ray of hope in the form of Haley's boyfriend, an illegal immigrant who can sew up bears in record time. How'd you like to come work for me? I'll pay you $2 an hour and all the Mr. Pib you can drink. Maximum two a day. Not thinking much of them, Stan employs the boy and his family to make up the bears he needs, with little to no time for themselves and wages that would borderline slavery. Ah, oh, the sweet sound of illegals working for pennies on the dollar. To make matters worse, Stan sees this as him giving these people a better chance at life, and not as the sweatshop it truly is. You have a big future here, Paco. In 10 years, you could be making five bucks an hour and be up to seven pibs a day. Number three, racially profiling his neighbors and locking them up. Stan's a racist, plain and simple, and it's not exactly well hidden. So, uh, what part of Islam do you hail from? Well, my parents were from Iran, but I was born in Cleveland. Really? You know, we also have a Cleveland here in America, and it'd be just super if you didn't blow it up. When Francine invites the new Iranian neighbors, his ignorance comes out in full blast risking them and even refusing to listen to them. Not satisfied until he finds proof, he begins to spy on them. And when that doesn't work, he locks them up in a self-made detention center in his backyard. I've acted horribly to you guys. I'm sorry. Sorry, you're terrorists! <gasps> of course, you might wonder how all his neighbors would put up with this behavior, until he locks them in there too. Stubborn and ignorant to the very end, this is one episode where Stan doesn't even learn his lesson. Unless somehow they brainwashed me to do their bidding! Good God! I'm the terrorist! Number 2. Stealing Greg and Terry's Baby Stan is a right-wing extremist. And while he has opened up a teensy bit more each season, his mind remains shut tight on many aspects of modernity, including a gay couple having children. If two men want to open up to each other and share a love more sweet and exquisite than anything a man and woman could ever find together, then that's their problem. But when they try to bring a child into it, I gotta put my foot down! When Francine carries Greg and Terry's child, Stan feigns concern, only to kidnap the baby immediately after she's born. Don't you worry, little girl. We're gonna find you a real home. <laughs> Still in complete denial that two people of the same gender can raise a child properly, he even kidnaps another same-gender couple's children to take them to an orphanage, where maybe someday they'll be adopted by a straight couple. You know, we could have turned him into the cops, but that would have just created another monster. How this man even raised his own children is… oh, wait, yeah, he did a terrible job with that, too. Come on, give me a hug. You know you want to. Ah! That wasn't campy at all! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Putting Francine in a Psychiatric Ward to Stall for Time Francine's probably put up with the worst from Stan, from being shot in the arm to repressing any idea she presented that might change their lifestyle. How she stayed married to him for over 20 years is a mystery. Forgetting their anniversary yet again, Stan decides he would rather commit her to a mental health facility and only then come up with an idea for a present than hear her nag at him again. That's her! Go, go, go! Beautiful. <laughs> this would already be horrible enough if it weren't for the fact that he forgets he left her in there and then gives her a bucket of fried chicken as a gift. Happy anniversary! Yeah, we gotta agree with Francine on this one. I hate you. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.